We live drums. Hello, I'm Gary France, and today we're going to continue our discussion of snare drum technique with the stroke. Now, basically, there are three types of strokes. There's a downstroke, there's an upstroke, and there's a tap stroke. And we'll discuss those in, in, in detail in a moment. But with all of those, we break them down into the different parts of our body that we use. We can have a full arm stroke where we're using our, our, from our shoulder. Some people discuss this as the molar stroke. Left arm. If we're playing matched grip, the same thing. Our lower arm stroke. And our wrist stroke. Again, lower arm, wrist stroke. And of course, we can use fingers for those as well. A lot of material very quickly there. We'll look at it in more detail in a moment. But let's talk about these strokes. We've discovered that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and that our our sticks should be going straight up and down or in a parallel relationship with the vector of the drum. The angle of the drum, we'll we want a parallel relationship. So if I am playing traditional grip, I'm parallel about an inch off the drum. If, okay? So that's why we angle our drums in relationship to our physique. Now, our first stroke, the, the tap stroke, or, uh, is a stroke that we, we basically use where, where our stroke starts and ends from the same place. And for these, why don't I stay on match grip for a little while? I'll stay here on match grip for a little while. When I work with young people, we walk up to our drum, we're comfortable, we're going to look at our strokes, and we start with this wrist stroke. Here I've got my wrist, and my wrists are cocked up in this, in this grip, and I sort of form a 45 degree angle. I say, well, it's the airplane wing grip or a 45 degree angle. You notice that my fulcrums are open. Right, my hands are relaxed. And what I'm doing is here is similar to dropping the tennis ball. You might say I'm throwing the stick. Now, this is, this is a tap stroke. It starts and stops where we began. Then we have our controlled stroke or down stroke. The controlled stroke or downstroke says that we're going to start here, but we're going to end about an inch off the, off the skin. You'll notice that it sounds a little bit like an accented note because I'm staying there. Why would you play a controlled stroke? Well, what if the next sound you want to make is a soft stroke? So let's say I want to do one loud followed by three soft strokes. What did I need to do on the fourth stroke, the soft one? Well, I needed to come back up for my accented note. One, two, three, four. That fourth stroke is called an upstroke. It's a preparation. It means that I'm playing softly, but I know I've got an accented coming up, an accent coming up. Downstroke, downstroke, upstroke, upstroke. Down, down, up, up. When we look at our rudiment, the flam, the flam is a combination of a downstroke and an upstroke. And we'll talk about these in much greater detail when we look at 
when we look at our, our different rudiments, but the flam, I'm starting in my left hand with, a, with an upstroke, and my right hand has a down. So together, down strokes, up strokes, tap strokes. So our down stroke stays down. Our up stroke goes up, stays up, from down to up. Tap strokes remain the same. Within our wrist, we have three different types of, of wrist strokes, and they're not types as much as they are g uh, gradations, okay? What I teach my students is that we have a high wrist stroke. You notice I try to bring my tips right back together. Also important is that I'm playing on exactly the same spot on the snare drum. Why is this important? If you want a consistent sound, stay in the same place. Listen, to hear some different sounds playing in different places. Right, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we always want to play in the same place. So we have a high wrist stroke. We have medium wrist strokes. And we have low wrist strokes. It makes sense that if you want to play loud, we drop our stick from a high height. If we want to play softly, we drop it from a very, very low height. We let nature dictate how we play. So we're not actually hitting the drum soft. That's the wrong way to think about it. We're playing the drum in a soft manner and that our sound is soft, so we're actually just playing the drum the same, but we're dropping it We're playing close to the skin. It can't be loud. Try and put your stick next to the head, maybe a millimeter or two or a quarter of an inch. See how hard you can play the drum. No matter how hard I push, that's about all I'm going to get out of that drum. I cannot get enough velocity. I can't get the speed going fast enough for the mass of the stick to transfer the energy to the head. I'm too close. From up here, dropping it in a relaxed manner makes a loud sound, a louder sound. In traditional grip, the same thing goes. High, medium, low. High, medium, low, right? If I want to create more energy, all I really do is increase the velocity. So now I'm throwing the stick. Faster. If I want more velocity, I'm going to use a lower arm connected with a wrist snap. If I want even more, I'm going to use the full arm, sometimes called the molar stroke. Again here, same thing here. Full arm. I feel like I'm lifting off the drum. I'm getting that stick off the drum, but in, in the same relationship to bouncing the basketball, I'm coming up. My hand doesn't stop the stick from coming up. I'm actually doing it with the stick. Lower arms. High wrist. I can get a lot of power with high wrist, medium wrist, low wrist, etc. So we have our three different positions, high, medium, and low. We have uh, wrist, arm, and full, lower arm, and full arm. And then we have the three types of strokes, the down stroke, the up stroke, and the tap stroke. A lot of information there and a lifetime of learning. But I think it, it's something really con worth considering, and we'll go into that in more detail in private lessons, of course. But for now, you want to really be aware that we let nature follow its course. With every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You notice that my sticks are coming straight up and down. 
so it's easy for me to, to, uh, to play quickly, and that I'm not spending too much time worrying about um, grabbing them and carrying them back up. It's surprising, but this is one of the most fundamental rules of drumming. Number one, be relaxed. Relaxed grip, relaxed stance, everything should be relaxed. Follow the rules of nature and everything will take its course. Thank you very much. We live drums.